What is going on everybody and in this video we'll be taking a look at the Chrysler 300 SRT8 limousine now this car is indeed in the motor pass if you want to get this you have to hit level 13 and buy the motor pass there honestly the car is pretty cool from what I've been driving it around so far a little bit um, is it worth getting we'll get into that in this video and all that because I know a lot of people are wondering if it's better than the Crown Victoria which I'm going to do a limousine like comparison video to see which one's better braking top speed handling all that good stuff to see which one's actually better because honestly this car was already in the game here which is the regular srt8 so this one's basically extended i wonder if we'll see other cars extended like that in the future or maybe they'll do something different because we are seeing limousines who knows what else they could add i would love to see some like crazy trucks or something like that would be pretty cool uh, regardless let's see if we can customize this which probably won't be able to do too much to it in my guess so color here you could do official Got the pink limousine there. Again, if you guys are wondering, the back of the car is completely tinted as well. If I could zoom in on that, um, you'll see that you can't really see anything in the back for that matter. So if you are picking somebody up, can't see anybody back there. Um, crazy, there's no detail. But then again, this isn't GTA, so you can't actually pick anybody up and go hang out in a limousine. Regardless, there's some rims you could do. All these rims are on every other vehicle as well. So I wouldn't put these on here personally. Plus the caliber colors, which I'm going to leave regular. And then we also have the vanity items rims aka tires i don't know why i said rims i don't know what i'm doing but uh we also have nitros and we also have underglows and then window tints horns and then rooftops here again so the other one also had rooftops you guys could do to it so you could add all of these to it if you'd like the uh, these are obviously what you guys have unlocked you can throw on there i mean you should be able to put some rooftop items on it considering the rooftop is really big so i mean i would hope a little vent like that could fit on there even though it looks kind of weird, it looks like a weird submarine car. Now, in a submarine limousine, that'd be pretty hilarious to see. Don't take any ideas, Rockstar. We might see that in GTA now. But regardless, there isn't a ton you can do to this car when it comes to customization. As you all see arriving outside here, it is obviously a limo. Let's listen to this car right now. So I give it a 10 out of 10 already on sound compared to the Crown Victoria, mainly because it is a V8. That sounds awesome. Let's go take a look at the interior. Interior looks pretty nice as well. So overall, whoa, does that GPS work? What? Hold a minute. Does that GPS actually work? Am I, am I actually seeing things right now? Wow. All right, I don't know if I'm imagining things, but that GPS is actually showing me where I am on the map right now. And I'm guessing this is the only car that is currently doing that. At least I didn't see that in the other limo. That's actually very, very cool. I actually have a mini map in my car. I wonder if that will be something they may add in the future. So I did automatically start accelerating, and this car is a 5-speed, which also makes me like it a lot more. Let me slow down and redo the acceleration thing. Pretty hilarious how mind-blown I was seeing that in the car. But anyway, let's do an acceleration run here. So I'm going to have a weird feeling that I almost just destroyed this thing right there. I'm going to have a weird feeling this car might be slightly better than the Crown Victoria, mainly because it is indeed a 5-speed instead of a 4 so I might not have as many issues struggling with speed there. Let's get this thing up to speed over here. Hitting the Nitro Chemist on this car. So top speed, you have to burn through the Nitro so to get it up there. So top speed's 238 miles an hour. It looks like, let's do it a little bit harder. 241, 243. So I guess it kind of depends, but you're going to go through way too much nitrous to actually get that speed. So it may not even be actually worth doing there. Oh, I'm going to crash. Oh no. Okay. I almost actually crashed it because I get a little nervous driving this thing around in tight turns like that. But overall, the handling actually seems pretty nice on it. I'm looking forward to racing this thing around. Do a random street race with it somewhere and actually see what it could do. Oh, and I ran into a Ford. I told you guys in another video I always run into Fords. And for some reason, it does not stop. I keep running into Fords. I'm going to go around this roundabout right here as well. See what this thing can do here. Let's hit the brakes. Surprisingly, the brakes are actually not bad. This thing's actually handling really good. I really just drifted a limo around that turn. So overall, it actually is driving pretty decent. Let's jump into a race right now and see how it really can do. But first, I want to go over here and do this really tight turn with it and see if it goes around this turn like a, like a little bus. Let's see. I dropped into the wrong gear there, don't mind me. Back into second. So obviously you could drift limos in this game, which is pretty hilarious. Anyway, let's jump into the race. So for this, I probably picked one of the worst races to do with this vehicle, but why not? I might as well take this thing on a race it really does not even belong in. Excuse me, Neil, your GTR ain't nothing to my limo, which I don't know how I just went around that turn better than he did. So overall, I have to admit one thing. This car does seem pretty dang good. The brakes are actually really nice on it. 
Now the Crown Victoria limo is pretty nice when I do the comparison video. I'm interested to see how they compare to each other. Because one thing that automatically makes me like this car right away for one is the engine sound. I love how the V8 just screams. Mm, sounds amazing. But also the 5 speed transmission to me is so much better than the 4 speed there. So I wonder if that new cab car they're going to be adding in the summit in a couple weeks. I wonder if that car will be a 4 speed. Probably will be. Because it kind of reminds me of the kind of car that would. And I was in the wrong gear there. This is probably like literally the worst car to have on this race. So that's why I wanted to pick this one to do this with. So downshifting actually worked pretty well. I, the car's actually, for its size, it's turning very good. Very odd. Brakes seem pretty nice as well so far. I'm driving this thing a little bit. Let's accelerate a little bit. Not really surprised the other races are with me on this one. Still fast than all of them are though. Coming up to a big turn. Good time for brakes. I was going way too fast. Surpri wow! I actually just managed to stop in time with the brakes. So this car has this car brakes quickly. That's a good plus. So if you guys are trying to do some of those missions with it and mess around, at least you'll be able to brake and decent get around the turns nicely. It's weird because it's handling really nice for a limo. Like the Chrysler's actually really good. So far, I'm actually generally impressed with this car, I'm not even gonna lie. I was not expecting it to do this good. Especially on a track like this, car does not belong in this track at all. Shift a little bit. Shifting it with how this car is is still kind of weird, but it's better than a four speed. It doesn't get weird around turns. A little bit when you guys see me downshift, I kind of lose power a little bit sometimes, like this one, for example. So I gotta be in second gear to come out of that turn with more power. And then coming out of it, you can immediately uh, lose speed too. So sometimes how they shit, like their gear can be a little weird with shifting. Sometimes it is a little weird when accelerating and trying to hit the nitrous. Sometimes the cars just don't really do that well, but I guess it kind of depends on the gear that you are in with them. So I'm in fifth gear right now on this kind of open road. So I can get a high speed run here with it. 230 miles an hour with no issues there. Coming up some tight roads, brake. Ooh, I'm actually really impressed with the brakes in this car so far. Handling on it overall, like when you're racing it around, it doesn't actually feel like a limo. That's the crazy part. It really doesn't actually feel like a limo. That's crazy. It's it's insane. Overall, I have to say, is this car worth getting in the motor pass? Well, if you guys are getting the motor pass, definitely level up and grab this car and test it out because it actually might shock you how good the Chrysler limousine actually is. To me, it handles very nicely, has great brakes, and overall seems like a pretty cool car to drive. So if you guys are looking to drive something, in those new cab missions, this could be a good car to look at. And here are the settings I'm running on my Chrysler 300 SRT8 limousine.